Hey there, my name is Charles, and in this Networking 101 video, we're going to demonstrate how to create a route table and then modify the default routing to ensure that traffic from one subnet flows through a firewall appliance before going out to the internet. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Azure. So when we think about uh, network routing and traffic flow for virtual networks uh, in Azure, the, the default setting is that if we have virtual machines or services on a virtual network and it's trying to communicate with something, maybe it's a storage account, maybe it's another virtual machine at another virtual network, could be services uh, that are on-premises or in AWS, you know, at the, the, the end of the day, the, the traffic needs to leave the virtual network. By default, um, there's a router behind the scenes that we can't really see or interact with that's going to forward that traffic on, right? There are default routes that exist to allow traffic to go to the internet. Um, if we have peering set up, if we have a VPN or express route set up, there are routes that get added behind the scenes to use the other address, that are, uh, the other address range that's associated uh, for that virtual network, for that VPN. And so if we need to um, change the, the routing flow meaning that we don't want just the default um, traffic from, say, a virtual machine to the internet uh, to not go through a firewall, for example, then uh, depending on our scenario or our use case, uh, we probably need um, a user-defined route or a route table. So in the scenario that we have one virtual network, and you know I have this one virtual network created here, we'll go take a look at the subnets here. Uh, the subnets within this virtual network, we've got maybe two subnets for services for application. Uh, in any case, it's 10.2.0.0 .0 .0 uh, and 10.2.1.0. Maybe those are our, our, where our virtual machines are going to be living. And then we also have another subnet here created called uh, Azure Firewall Subnet. Now, I use that name specifically because uh, if you decide to use an Azure Firewall, like specifically the, the Microsoft Firewall, um, then the subnet name has to be that name. You, if you try to go deploy the resource, uh, it's going to say that the, the name of the subnet must be Azure Firewall Subnet, very specifically. Um, so it's a good practice to just have that created, even if we might use a third-party appliance from Fortinet, Palo Alto, F5, Barracuda, you know, any of the, um, the NVAs that would be out there in the Azure Marketplace that you could use. From, uh, from the other companies. And we would still just use this subnet to put that firewall. And then when we deploy the firewall, uh, we'll, we'll just put it on that subnet. Um, but just because we deploy a firewall to, you know, especially if it's a third party NVA from the, from the marketplace, if we deploy a Palo Alto firewall um, and it just grabs the first IP address, that firewall would be 10.2 255.4. That's going to be the private IP address of that firewall. Well, if a virtual machine, if the virtual machine on subnet 0 could be, you know, dot five, dot six, zero dot five, zero six, tries to go to the internet, well, by default, it's not going to use this firewall. Just because it's called a firewall subnet and we put a firewall out there uh, doesn't mean that the routing knows to route the traffic through the firewall first. Um, and so to, to kind of modify that default traffic flow, uh, we need a route table and we need to create some rules. So a uh, route table is another object in Azure. We can go up to the top here, search for route tables, select that as a service. We will create this route table. I'm going to put it in the Twitch demos resource group. Um, don't know why the region went to Southeast Asia. We'll change that back to East US. And we'll name the route table, um, keeping our naming convention, uh, RT for route table, East US, uh, and then we'll just call it demo one. There's really, uh, when you're creating the resource, there's really not any other options here. Um, propagate routes, we normally want that. That's a yes, uh, default anyway. Tags if we want to. Uh, otherwise, we just review and create. So we'll uh, create that resource. 
And now within the route table, once this gets created, uh, we can, there, there's two things that we have to do. We have to create the route, like how do we want to modify, modify this traffic flow, uh, and then associate the route with a subnet. And so, you know, what are we actually changing? So the first thing we'll do is create that route. We'll go to the routes tab here, add a route. Um, and we're going to call this, you know, to firewall. So if um, the destination is pretty much anything, so all zeros, all zeros are out. So if we're going um, to the internet, then the next hop is probably going to be a virtual appliance. And so then that next hop address would be the IP address of the firewall that we deploy in that firewall subnet. And so um, if we go deploy a Palo Alto, a Fortinet, you know, pick a firewall from the marketplace, um, just deploy it in our firewall subnet, the first available IP address is going to be .4, uh, in the subnet that we have created, because it was a 10.2.255 network um, slash 24. So that's the first available IP address in this network. And so what this is saying is that the, the route um, to, as a destination, uh, to anywhere on the internet, all zeros, the, the next hop is this virtual appliance, uh, in our case, the firewall. And so we can add this route And now we're going to say that, um, so this is the route that we have created, but now we need to associate it with those two subnets that are in that same virtual network. Because by default, those subnets can just go straight to the internet. And so if we want to change that, we're going to say that, okay, yeah, subnet one. Now if it tries to go to the internet because of that all zeros route, its next hop is going to be uh, the virtual appliance that is in the firewall subnet. And so we just have to repeat this for both of the subnets. So uh, the demo of one virtual network, we added subnet one just now. We'll add in subnet zero, click OK. And so now this route table has been associated uh, with both of these subnets. So now if we go back just to kind of look at the, the network view, Look at our demo01 and our list of subnets here. So now any virtual machine, any service that are on these two subnets, if they're trying to go to the internet, then instead of being routed directly to the internet by default, we've now changed that to say that, well, to get to the internet, now you have to go talk to this firewall first over here on the firewall subnet. And so we could deploy the firewall as long as it has that dot four address, which is what we put in the route table. And now we can do um, outbound traffic inspection, um, have our outbound routing rules, maybe network rules, application rules uh, to determine what is allowed to talk to the internet or you know, certain locations, certain services. We can configure and block all of that from the firewall that we deploy um, on the firewall subnet. So the, the key things here is that by default, subnets, services within a virtual network can communicate directly to the internet. Um, if we're going to deploy a firewall to uh, put in packet inspection, be able to create additional rules as to what we want to be able to communicate to the internet or anywhere else, um, then we, one, have to have a firewall to do that. And then two, we have to modify that default routing to say that, well, instead of going directly to the internet, first you have to go over here. And so we change that routing um, to say that, okay, anything from these two subnets, first go to the virtual appliance that's in this firewall subnet. Um, so that's how to use a route table. That's one example, uh, a common use case for, for routing um, or for, to, for changing the, the default routes. Um, there's plenty of other use cases, use cases around virtual uh, VPNs, virtual network gateways, express route, you know, any type of custom scenarios where uh, one service needs to talk to another service that is in a different virtual network um, or a different physical location other than Azure. Thanks for watching. I hope you were able to take something away from this video. 
I create these on Twitch every week, every Friday afternoon. If you have any questions that you would like to come ask live and in person, feel free to come follow me on Twitch as well. Thanks for watching.